Yo guys, welcome back to another video. So here we're working on the paper 2F of June 2021. And this is part of the international or IGCSE maths paper. Now, if you guys haven't seen paper 1F yet, I recommend you go down to the description and you watch paper 1F first. So, but without further ado guys, as always, we're going to break down every question step by step. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. If you guys are happy, please give me a like. Please share and subscribe your friends because this will help boost my channel performance. And, you know, all your support out there is massively appreciated. And if you guys want to, you know, get some Amazon books, go down to my description and click on the last link. You should be in Amazon section there and it should pretty much give you the list of books that I recommend to you guys. But yeah, let's jump straight in, yeah? We're going to go straight to number one. Let's start. Number one. It says that the table shows the length in kilometers of the coastline of each of the five oceans. Nice. Arctic, Atlantic, Indian. Well, cool. Which of these oceans has the greatest length of coastline? Well, just pick the biggest number. Well, look at look at Atlantic and Pacific. Pacific is slightly bigger, 135k versus 111k. So which is oceans? Well, it's the Pacific, of course. That's it. I'm going to make this point a bit skinnier. It's a way too, way too big. Now, write the number 17,968 in words. Let's write this together, yeah? So 17... In fact, and spelling's not a big deal. 1,000... 900, so always put a comma there after 17,000. 900 and, you must say and, 68. You don't have to put a hyphen or a dash, it's just optional, yeah? But I, brother, so 17,968. Nice. Write the number 62,526 correct to the nearest thousand. When they say nearest thousand, you just pretty much highlight thousand onwards and then you look at the second digit so because it's five or more the 500 common it'll be instead of being 66,000 it'll round up to 67,000 because it's closer so it'll be 67,000 now work out the total length of the coastlines of the Arctic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean so they want us to add up those two oceans Arctic and Pacific so Arctic is 45,000 and Pacific is a hundred and forty-five thousand so in your calculator, you literally write down. So I would write 135,663 plus 45,389. Just remember, this is the whole point of the calculator. You literally just input everything in. And if you do that, I mean, if I put in the calculator right, that is, I got like 181,000. So always double check your numbers, guys, yeah? One point double check. So write down numbers straight to the calculator, 181. Remember, this is a calculus, so they don't, they don't want to see no column addition or anything. It's, you don't need to do that. 0, 5, 2. See if you guys got the same. Now, number 2. Write down the order of rotational symmetry of a square. Now, most of the time, it's not very clear if you've never seen this before what it means. It just means if you had a square, rotate this one clockwise. Clockwise means like in this direction, yeah? It's going to be another square. So if it helps, maybe I'll change the color one line. If I rotate once, this is one red. Rotate becomes like that. If I rotate the square one more time, it's going to, the red line is now going to appear at the bottom. You'll realize that eventually, if you rotate once more after that, it goes over here on the left. And then you'll realize rotate once more goes back to its original position. So the order rotation symmetry of a square, when it all looks the same, will be four, four times over. So the answer is four. That's when they literally look identical because it's a square. Now for part B, I've decided to change the page because I can do my drawing properly. But here they want us to measure the size of angle marked X. Now all you've got to do guys is you get this protractor and you see this little cross part here. It has to basically match the cross part of it, the point over here. So what I'm trying to say, this point here, this little plus, half plus, or this kind of upward thing, has to match like here. That's it. That's where you got to place it. So let's try this out. Let's try and move our one all the way down, yeah? So see if you guys can do it as well. If you do it, it should land somewhere like like this, roughly. And when you do that, all you got to do is literally look at the, the right-hand side. Now, it, look, it might look a bit confusing because you've got 120 to 130, but we're not starting from there. We always start from zero degrees. So over here, it says twin chords, so I have to thank these guys for, using, for letting me use their protractor. Here's zero degrees, and you want to go all the way up to here, just past 50. So if it helps, just cross out, you know, you can't do it, but I'm going to cross those numbers. You can see that the, the line cuts through some small line just before the halfway mark between, between 50 and 60. So I'll say if you start from this point here, 
So that's 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. So the little lines that one go, goes up in one. So this should be approximately 54 degrees. If you guys got that, perfect. You know, the marks is quite lenient. You can get anywhere between 52 to 56 degrees. And you can get, say, something like 52.1 degrees or 52.5. They'll give you any of this. But you want to be as accurate as possible. Yeah, so that's it. That's part I done. Let's move on to the next part B. Now, write down the mathematical name of this type of angle. Well, because this angle is less than 90 degrees, think of it as a small, cute angle. Yeah, this means acute. And that's all you really need to know for this one. Yeah, so the angle name is an acute angle. Now, here is a 3D shape. Write down the mathematical name of this type of 3D shape. Well, the way I look at this, you've got a square at the bottom. It's a pyramid. It's literally just called a square-based pyramid. Yep, that's it. Square-based pyramid. And then how many edges does the shape have? Edges is literally the lines, yeah? The corners are called the vertex or vertices for Flora, yeah? So you, here you've got five vertices. Edges, just use like a, a pencil to mark it. So it goes up once, twice, three times, this dotted line four, and again you got four across the square. So one, two, three, four. So altogether you have eight. It has eight edges. Okay, eight edges and five vertices. Alright, next, number three. The pictogram gives some info about the number of parcels delivered by a delivery company on each of the five days last week. So these squares are just squares, yeah. Now Let's understand what this means. So on Monday, the delivery company delivered 20 parcels. So apparently all of that means 20. Nice way to understand what that means. Count the squares, yeah? The, just the little squares. So you've got four here, another four, that's eight. Another two, that makes 10. So this 10, you just double it. So every square is worth two. That's what it's trying to say, yeah? It helps a lot if you think of it that way. So you're literally just doubling your result. Now, Work out the total number of parcels delivered by the delivery company on these five days. So let's add them up. On Tuesday, you got four, 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 four. That's four, that's 16. Double 16 gives us 32. Next one, you got four and two, that's six. Double six is 12. Here, you got three. Double three is six. Last one, they have to make it a bit annoying. So you got four plus four plus four. Remember, you've got a calculator. It helps, it helps all of us. It's hard to always count this. So that's 4, 8, 12, 13. Double 13 is 26. Now all you've got to do is just add these lot up here. So when you add them all up, you should get, and I hope this is right, 96. So the total number of parcels was 96. Okay, and yeah, that's it. And just, I guess you're writing a dotted line, helps. Now, number four. Points A, B, and C shown on the grid are the vertices of triangle ABC. So vertices again are the point at the corners. All right. Write down the coordinates of point B. So when you want to work at the coordinates, you should always remember. I don't know if your teachers told you, but you should always run before you jump here, or walk before you jump either way. So run before you jump here. Jumping is in the y axis. So this is jumping, and running is along the x axis. So so let's run first. So here. He's running backwards at minus 2, and then he goes all the way up to 3, so it'll be minus 2, 3. Or you can think of x goes before y. Alphabetically, x also goes before y, so that's another way to look at it. Write down the mathematical name of triangle ABC. You have to be very careful. You have to try to understand what kind of name is it. Usually, it will be either equilateral or isosceles. These are the two popular ones. Now, an isosceles means, you know, Two of the lengths and angles are the same. So let's check it out. If we split this triangle A in half here, yeah, that's how I always like to check. What does it look like to us? Well, it looks to me that this length from B to the midpoint and midpoint to C is kind of the same. And this long length, so it goes two down and it goes approximately two, six across. And here it goes two up, six across. So this means this is an isosceles. It's not equilateral because it doesn't look like all the angles are the same. This one looks way smaller than these two look bigger. So the answer is isosceles, I can and I can never spell it, I have spelling issues. So isosceles, is that spelling correct guys? You know, you can always check it on Google. Important spot isosceles. <laughs> now, next one, the coordinates of point D are 1 minus 4. Let's just plot that in here. Yeah? So 1 minus 4. This is point D, yeah? 
on the grid, mark with a cross X the position of D and label the point D. We did it. So one across, four down. One minus four down. Find the corners of the midpoint of AB. Midpoint is the halfway point. So a trick, again, just, just look across, just try and just try and do it visually. I'll say the midpoint is where it cuts perfectly in center and it looks like it's around there. You know, you can always get a ruler and just measure it and find a halfway number, but this looks like it's going one down, three across, one down, three across. So this corner here is one across and two up. Let's write down in the final answer. One, two. Nice. Now five. Here is a shape made of squares. Shade three fifths of the shape. Trick, just because it says three fifths, and you've got five at the bottom, just count five across and shade three rows down. So that's that's one row shaded, two rows shaded, three rows shaded. That's three fifths. That's just another way to do it, guys. Just a nice little handy trick. Which one of these fractions is not equivalent to four sevens? Again, use your calculator. Put 40 over 70 in the calculator. It reduces to four sevens. Eight over 14, that reduces to four sevens. 400 over 700, just cancel the zeros. That's four sevens. 14 over 17, I mean, that does not look like it's, it works. Why? Because 17 is a prime number, so it's not going to drop. So which one is not equivalent? It's this one. And just to check the last one, 20 over 35, put that in your calculator, you got four sevens. If you guys are not sure how to write fractions, there's literally a fraction button on the top left of your Casio. Make sure you use Casio, and it looks like that. So then on the top line, you enter the top digit, and then you go down to the bottom number, not bottom digit, and you enter it down as well. Now, write 3 over 10 as a percentage. All you've got to do is copy this fraction into your calculator, and then times it by 100 as always. If you do that, you should get 30. In other words, 30%. I should put this answer here. 14 over 17 goes here. Which one of these fractions is not equivalent? So there's only one fraction here. Now, part D. Write 77 over 9 as a mixed number. So what I want you guys to do firstly is enter 77 over 9 in your calculator and press the equal button. And then press Shift and SD. Shift, SD. And it tells you straight away the answer to be 8 and 5 ninths. That will just save you a lot of time. And if you're not too sure, if, if this way is just a bit annoying, you can literally just divide it. 77 divided by by 9 in your calculator and then press SD you should get 8.5555 occurring afterwards 77 over 9 take away 8 let me see what I get then you get exactly 5 knives so what that means is that you'll, you'll have a whole number 8 and 5 knives so you can stick it together now next one 5 6 of a number is 40 let's write that what that means 5 over 6 off means times of a number should give us 40. What is the number? Well, thankfully you have a calculator. So what I guys want you to do is put this box underneath and write equal. And then to find the inverse, you go to the inverse of 5, 6. So it'll be 40 divided by, and this is going to look weird, and on the bottom, you're going to write 5 divided by 6. To write on your calculator, guys, <laughs> press the fraction button first. On the top half, you're going to write the number 40. And guess what? Then you go to the bottom and then you press the fraction button again. And then replace that with 5 on that top and 6 on the bottom. And if you do that, this is just a nice way of doing it. If you do that, you should get 48 as your answer. And that's, that should be your correct answer. So, next one, 6. Now, the cost of a mobile phone in the UK is £350. Where it could, I mean, it costs a 1000 these days. The cost of an identical mobile phone in India is 28,000 plus rupees. Ooh. Now, the current exchange rate for one pound is 91 rupees. That's a straight up lie. The cost of the mobile phone in the UK is more than the cost of the mobile phone in India. But how much more? Let's try and do it. What they want you to do here is basically make them the same currency. So if they, they're telling us one pound is 91 rupees, we've got to change one of them. I think we should change the rupees to the pounds. Now, the way I look at this, because the number 91 is larger than 1, if you want to go from a larger to a smaller, you divide. If you want to go from a smaller to a bigger, you multiply. So what we're going to do, take this number, 28,000 plus rupees, and then divide it by the rate, which is 91. See what that gives, gets you. If you do that, you should get 318. So this costs 318 pounds. In India. 
that's how much it costs. It says here, the question was, the cost of the mobile phone in the UK is more than the cost. That's true. So the answer is yes. By, and then find the difference between 350 and 318. If you do that, the difference is 32 pounds. That's it. So 32. Now Hassan is going to eat at a restaurant. Here is the menu of the restaurant. So you get fruits, prawn, soup, burger, curry, lasagna, risotto. Wow, mashallah, looks all halal. I like it. Hassan is going to choose one starter and one main course from the menu. List all the possible combinations that Hassan can choose. Okay, so possible combinations. So one starter, one main. So he could, for example, get a fruit and a burger, a fruit and some curry, and so on. You just got to do it like that. One of each. So we could say, and it's nice to put in a bracket, one fruit and burger, or one fruit and curry. So just line up like that. One fruit and lasagna. So just have to just do it for each one. And then keep doing this, guys. Prawn and then burger. Doing the same order. So line up nicely. Prawn and then curry. Risotto. That's it. So he has 12, 4 by 3, 12 possible combinations. Nice. That's it. That's what they want. Yes, algebra. My favorite topic, guys. Who here loves algebra? You know, let me know if you guys are a big fan of algebra. Now, question 8A. They want you to simplify W times W times W times W times W. If they told you to add up all these W's, it would be 5 lots of W's. Because we're multiplying all these W's, it's going to be W to the power of 5. And that's what they want. Now, simplify 5A times 3C. You just Because the letters are different, you glue them together. So 5 times 3 is 15AC. Nice. Simplify 3E plus 2F minus e plus 5s so first we deal with the e's then we deal with the f's you can't com you can't combine them so 3e take away e which is basically 1e so 3e take away 1e is 2e and then 2f which is positive so look at the sign in front positive 2f plus positive 5s gives us a positive 7f next one solving solve 5x minus 7 equals x plus 12 so i'm going to just copy out nicely over here and just show you tricks i like to use it's very important that you line up the equal signs every time, guys, yep? So what I do, I move all the x's to the left and numbers to the right. So this is a positive x. To get to the left-hand side, you need to minus x across. So it will be 5x minus x, which is, remember, that's 1x. 5x take away 1x is 4x. And to get the minus 7 across, you need to be add 7. So 12 add 7 is 19. Now, to get x, you've got to, get that, you've got to split the 4 and x. So the, it's because it's 4 times x, you'll be, you need to divide 4 across. So it'd be x equals 19 over 4. You can leave it like that. You don't need to basically simplify it. But if you really want to, you can say therefore x in the calculator, 19 divided by 4 is 4.75 as well. Again, you can leave it like that. Or this. Both is fine. Now, moving on. So the table shows information about the number of pieces of homework each student in year 11 received last week. Okay, so for example, four students, frequency means number of students, yeah? Four students received three pieces of homework, whereas someone like 12 students got six. So it looks to me like, okay, it's all random, so work out the range of the number of pieces of homework. So range means from the smallest number of homework to the biggest number, so you've got to subtract it. So between seven and three. So the answer would be seven minus three, so the range is four. Okay, work out the mode of the number piece of homework. The most co the most the most common one was twelve, so that means the mode was six. So this was the most popular number of um, piece of homework to give because most of the students got it twelve. So just find the biggest number here and select it there. So it'd be six. Now, work out the mean number of pieces of homework. Ooh, give your answer correct to one. Display. This is where the big math comes in now. So you get the mean. The trick is like this. You need to make a new column and call it fx. Why? Because the frequency would be f and number of pieces of homework would be x. So that just means you're multiplying f with x. So just draw a line across here. And all you guys got to do, let me just drop that out, is multiply these numbers across. Because the what this is telling you, this is kind of like a total. So you had four students, each of them got three homework. So three times four means 12. There was 12 pieces of homework given out. The next one, 4 times 8, so keep multiplying all the way across. Okay. And now you're going to find the grand total, yeah? So grand total. 
add all these numbers up in your calculator. That's what a calculator is for. So 12 plus 32 plus 50 plus 72 plus 28, and you should get 194 pieces of homework given out. Now that's the total. They want to find the mean number of pieces of homework, right? So we need to first find out how many students were there in year 11, the average. So you need to now add up the total frequency. Frequency means how many students there were. So in your calculator, write 4 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 4. The grand to the total number of students was 38. So we can write over here, number of students, I mean you should write the bottom actually, is 38. And then to find the mean, just divide these two numbers here. Yeah? In this kind of question, you go find the mean. So 194 divided by 38, you can do as a fraction. Doing that, you should get an answer of roughly 5.1, just one place, 5.1. So ABC is a triangle, AB is 7 centimeters, BC is 6.2 centimeters, and an angle ABC is 65 degrees. Draw accurately the triangle ABC. Now the line AB has been drawn for you. Okay, so in this question, there's two things you need here, and I purposely put two rulers because it's going to help me because I'm using a PC. First, you need your ruler, and you need a protractor. These two things, yeah, this is ultimately necessary. The first thing guys, I want you to do is to get your ruler and then measure the line. It helps that you can get seven, you, that you can see that it's exactly seven centimeters. So the best thing you want to do is that you start at the zero point on the left side and make sure it hits right the corner of A, and then you check out the length. You can see that at zero it hits A, and at point B it should be seven. So that's perfect. Now it tells us in the question that we've got lengths. Uh, we we can see that AB is seven. That's good. But what about BC and what about the angle? Well, let's just redraw. Let's just visualize how the triangle should be here. Yeah? If we just draw a nice triangle, it doesn't have to be perfect, a little sketch, and we know that this is AB, and this is obviously C at the top. When you want to find angle ABC, you look at the middle angle B. So what I usually do, I usually just kind of just visualize it with a highlighter. I start from A, go to B, then go to C. It's always the middle angle. So this angle here, the B one, should be 65 degrees. So we're talking about this corner here. We know that this has to bend to 65 degrees. And we know once we, once we find the angle, we just should just draw a straight line and, and just go as far as six, and just go 6.2 centimeters up. So let's try it now. What I'm going to do now, we get a protractor. We're going to put it right at the corner. So the tip is, the trick is, is to look at this little plus part, yeah? This point here has to match, the horizontal line has to match this horizontal line, and the up point has to be here exactly. So it's kind of like a little marker. So let's try this out. Let's try and move in the right place. So move your compass down, make sure that the horizontal line ticks, good, and make sure you move right at the corner B, like there, nice. Now, all you've got to do is find 65 degrees. So start here, go up, and you can see that it's between 60 to 70. So it's the middle line. So this point here must be 65 degrees. So what I do, I usually do like a little X or something, just to help me mark it. And now you get your ruler. And just try and just just match it up perfectly. So that's why I got this other ruler. Just literally saves time. So there you go. You just look at this point here, and that point you just draw a nice horizontal, a nice uh, straight line. So I did a straight line already earlier, and you're gonna make sure it makes six point two. So good trick is yeah, get your ruler and hit six point two on the red dotted line below. Just go up to six point two. Six point two is gonna be literally two like two small lines after the six. So you got the big six. And you want to get two small lines. I'll say about, like maybe go down a bit more. I don't know. This is always a bit tricky. So six point two. So six point one. Yeah, like that. This red dot has to touch the ruler. Six point two. Now, get a pencil and just draw a line straight up to zero. So that's six point two to zero means it's exactly six point two. A bit like that. And then you take off your ruler and then you got it. I mean, it's not perfect, perfect but it has to be fairly accurate. Yeah? And then you get your ruler again, and you draw now from here, you just connect the triangle all the way here to here. So this is quite easy. Just get your ruler and then connect it. I'm going to use one of my shape icons because it's easier for me. And I just go from here. Whoops. Whoops. I'm going to use my mouse. And you connect it to here, to this red dot here, and this one to here. That's it. And then you have your perfect triangle, roughly perfect. And then you must label this side 65 degrees and label this side 6.2 centimeters. It doesn't tell you to do anything else. It doesn't tell you to 
stay the length of this one. But you can if you want. That's it, guys. That's, hopefully this question helps. And that's it. Let's move on to number 11. Okay, 11. A circle has radius 7.5 centimeters. So here's your circle. Radius is just that length here. Yeah? That's your radius. And the R value is 7.5 centimeters. Work out the area of a circle. Oh, so you just got to know the formula. Area is just literally pi r squared. You, you have a nice pi button in your calculator. So oh, to access it, just press shift and then press where, that, where this button times 10 to the power x is. Should be there somewhere here. Yeah? So in your calculator, it's just going to be area equals, press the pi button, and then times, the radius is 7.5, and then press the square button. The square button looks like this. It's like an x squared in your calculator. And it should you should write something like that. If you guys did that, let me know, and, you and tell me if you get an answer of, to three same figures, you will round it up, 177, yeah? In the calculator, it should say 176.714, blah, blah, blah. Round to three cinema figures means you, you underline the first three numbers if it doesn't start with zero, and then you look at the number after it, seven. Because this is five or more, you round 176 up to 177. If it was less than five, like one, two, three, or four, or zero, then it stays at 176. But yeah, this should be your answer for that one. Now, let's move on to 12. Okay, so 12. This formula can be used to work out the cost in reals hiring a bicycle in Qatar for a number of days. Cool. Is anyone here watching the World Cup right now? What do you guys think of it? Now, cost equals 65 times number of days plus 44. Now, Galia or Galia hired a bicycle in Qatar for 14 days. So you're going to replace the number of days here with 14. What at the cost? So in your calculator, you're going to say 65 times the number of days which is 14 plus 44 you just write that exactly as it's written if you do that 65 times 14 and then you add 44 you should get an answer of exactly 954 reals cool so next part so the formula below can be used to work out the cost in reals for of hiring a helmet in Qatar so this formula below is for hiring a helmet and the top formula below is for hiring a bicycle. Okay, guess we need to keep them both in mind. Now, say here, Kasun wants to hire a bike and a helmet for the same number of days. So, it looks like we will combine them somehow. He wants to hire them for as many days as he can. He has 750 reals to spend. Welcome, how much of the 750 reals is not spent? Okay, so what I would do, so the first, so the bottom one is cost of helmet, so how much cost to have a helmet. And this is cost of hiring a bike. I think what we should do is add up these two formulas together, yeah, because you you got two formulas. So let's do this. We can say that the total cost has to equal basically the cost of a helmet, which is 12.5 times the number of days. So I'm gonna just call that 12.5 n for simplification, plus the top equation, 65 n plus 44. 65 n plus 44. Now, and we know that the total cost would have to be um, 750 reals, right? So let's put in the next line. He has 750 reals to spend. And now, just like any algebra problem, we need to collect like terms. 12.5n plus 65n. If you do that, you should get, I think, 77.5n. And you've got plus 44 left. Next, you want to subtract 44 across the equal sign because you want to get rid of it. So it'd be 750 minus 44. That will give us 706, and that's going to equal 77.5n. Next, you want to divide, you want to separate 77.5 from the n, and to do that, we need to divide it across. So it will be 706 over 77.5, and that has to equal n, the point there. Doing this, hopefully, should give us our final answer. This will give us a number of days of 9.109, blah, blah, blah. What this means is that it takes basically nine days and there's still something left over. Basically, they stayed for nine days. Yeah, we could say approximately nine days they spent. So all you gotta do is put this nine days back into the total cost formula. And that's it, you should get your answer. And it's worth four marks. Wow. So let's use it in the total cost. So let me box it up. 
and then copying this formula out somewhere neatly. So I'm going to just basically just say, okay, uh, make a little box here. I'll say cost will be, we could just use the combined values. So 77.5 N. Instead of N, we put a bracket, put a 9 in, and then plus 44. This will say altogether the cost was actually 741.5 reals. Now, how much of the 750 was not spent? Well, let's subtract the two answers, yeah? So 750 minus what we just got. That means they did not spend just 8.5 reals. So 8.5 is what they didn't spend. Anyway, let's move on to 13. Now, there are some counters in a bag. Seven are blue, five are green, and the rest are yellow. We don't know how many are yellow, actually. One counter is going to be taken at random from the bag. The probability that the counter is blue or green is 6 out of 13. That's very, that's very important to know. Work out how many yellow counters there are in the bag. So the way I look at this, we know how many there is in blue. So we've got, let's say, 7 blue, 5 green. Let's say the unknown is X, yeah? And we know that 7, if we add them all up, 7 add 5 is 12 plus X. So the total is 12 plus X counters, yeah? It just helps like that, yeah? If you prefer to use the letter Y for yellow, I think that actually makes perfect sense. Let's call it Y, yeah? 12 plus Y counters. Now, if it helps, we will do it step by step, yeah? It says the property that he takes a blue or a green is 6 out of 13. Now, we have to ask ourselves, how would we do it if we did ourselves? So if you want to take a blue or green, how many blues and greens do we have altogether? We said we had 12, right? So we could say the probability of taking blue or green is, from our understanding, we have 12 of them. Of what is the total? 12 plus y. And that's supposed to apparently equal 6 over 13. Now here's a nice kind of cool way of looking at this, yeah? We've got 12 over 12 plus y and 6 over 13. Why don't we just go ahead and kind of like make them the same? So look at the top lines, yeah? Let's, let's try and create the values. 12 at the top and 6 at the top. All we've got to do is double this value because it's a fraction, you love to do that. You can times up and down by 2 to get 12 over 26. So this means 12 over 12 plus y must equal 12 over 26. And now this tells us straight away that the bottom value, 12 plus y, has to equal 26. So we say, therefore, 12 plus y must equal 26. And then again, a little algebra. 12 plus something is 26. We can just do 26 take away 12. That should give us a nice value of y equals 14. So there were 14 yellow counters in the bag. Ooh. So work out 39% of 450. When I use the word percent, it just means per 100. So it means 39 over 100 times 450. You just put that in your calculator. 39 over 100 times 450. And it should give you exactly 175.5. That goes right there. Now B, write one pair of brackets in this calculation so that the answer is correct. So 9 times 8, take away 5, take away 2 has to give us, well, okay. My tip is always put a bracket where the plus or minus signs are, yeah? If you put where the times the divide sign, it doesn't change the, change the value at all. So for example, you could put a bracket here, or you could put, I'll change the color, a bracket like here. So either the red or the blue. Now what we do, let's try the red first, yeah? So in our calculator, let's put this in as it is a red bracket. And yeah, you actually get the answer. You get 25 first time, cool. So that should be your answer. Nice. Now part C, work out the value of root 8.9 over 6.2 take away 3.5. Again, using the calculator, using the fraction button, always start the fraction first. And on the top line, press the third button. It looks like that. And then enter, when you press it, then enter the value of 8.9 inside. And on the bottom, just copy it as it is, 6.2 minus 3.5. Do this what I want, so you should get the final result. So I'm going to do it right now as well, so I'll join you guys. So take your time and see if you get the result. If you do it correctly, you should get an actual answer of 1.10492 blah, blah, blah. They said, give your answer as a decimal. Write down all the figures in your calculator display. Okay, so they're quite specific here. So when you do that, all the figures should be this. 1.10492 That's what mine says. Try put what yours says as well. 
All right, cool guys. Next one, number 15. So write 600 as a product of powers of its prime factors. Show your work completely. Okay. So we go use something like a prime factor tree. And all you will do, put two things coming down, and ask yourself, 600. Because you've got zero there, you know it's, it's in the 10 times table. So you can just write 60 times 10. Same, same here again. They're both zero, so 6 times 10. To get 10, it's 1 times 10, but we don't want 1, because we want prime factors. So to get 10, it's 2 times 5. And then that's it. This one's done. When you finish it, circle your last primes, yeah? Now look at the left side. 6 can be made from 2 times 3. Once again, 10 can be made from 2 and 5. So we circle all our last primes. Now they said they want as a product of powers. So what that means here, you just count how many of each number there is, yeah? So let's do it here. So we say 600 is the same as 2 times 3 times 5. And for the powers, we want to write powers of how many we have. Twos, we have 1, 2, 3 pairs of twos, so 2 to the power of 3. For 3, we only have 1 of them. And for 5, we only have 1 and 2, so that's 2. This would be your answer here. So you just write here, 2 to the power of 3 times 3 times 5 to the power of 2. You can put 1 power here, but I like to just, I personally like to do it for neatness. Nice. Now, number 16. Show that when you divide these two mixed numbers, you get another mixed number. Now, cool thing is, use your calculator. It helps a lot. So what I would do, I would use a special button. So press shift and then use the fraction button as well after shift and then that one. Then you're going to realize that your calculator will show you this if you're using a Casio. Yeah? If you're not using a Casio, you can just write 2 in the calculator for the first one, 2 plus 4 over 7. This will give you an improper fraction. What we want to do, we want to make both of these into single fractions, yeah? So let's do it. So 2 plus 4 over 7. The first one gives us 18 over 7. That's the first one. And then divide it by, do the same, 1 plus 1 eighth or my other method, and you should get 9 over 8. Okay? Now, when you're dividing fractions, you will use a KFC method. KFC tells us that we need to keep the first fraction, flip the second one, and then change the sign to divide two times, yeah? So that means we have keep the first fraction, change the times, and flip that to 8 over 9, so upside down. So you're going to have 18 times 8. So you multiply across here. Yeah? 18 times 8 will give us, let's see, 144. And then bottom line, 7 times 9 will give us 63. Now what I want you guys to do is to enter that in your calculator. Yeah? So you can write 144 over 63. That will give us a straight up answer of, 16 over 7. They'll probably ask you how would you go from there to there. What I want you guys to do is a nice little hack. Draw arrows. So how would you go from 63 to 7? Well, you could do 63 divided by 7 in your calculator. It should be 9. This means that you divided 9 up and down. That's how we did it. And the last step, how would you go from 67 to that one? Well, you don't need to say much. You can write directly because there's one more step. And then you say the word shown. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you prove these kind of ones. So the bearing of Paris from London is 149 degrees from London. Work out the bearing of London from Paris. <laughs> I can see how this one can just confuse people. Let's start with this, yeah? When it comes to bearing, I want you to draw a point, guys, yeah? And just draw a north arrow going up. You always start from the word from. And bearings are always clockwise from the north, yeah? That's what it is. Now, 149 degrees is quite big. We know 90 degrees. Is here. This is a bearing of 90 degrees. 149 is less than 180, so it's going to be less than a straight line. So it's going to cut somewhere in between. You don't need to draw this accurately, by the way, because it doesn't say draw accurately. So what we can draw, we can just imagine that if we had a line coming like this, actually this is a bit too close to the thing. You want to draw 149 degrees, so I'll say probably like somewhere like a bit closer to the bottom. This is roughly 149 degrees. You can use a protractor if you want, but it's not necessary. But as long as it's bigger than 90. Now this is going all, all the way to here. We can call this point from London all the way to Paris. So that's what they want. That's a bearing. That's what the first sentence means. Now, the second sentence is this. Work out the bearing of London from Paris. And now we're starting from Paris and we're going back to London. So we need to work out the angle all the way back to this line. This will take us back. The question is, 
what is this angle here? Well, there's a nice rule, yeah? It's called allied angles, yeah? When you have a pair of lines like that, these two must add up to 180. So if this line was 149, it would be 149 plus something gives us 180. So in your calculator, 180 take away 149. Doing it mentally, that should give us 31 degrees. So this angle is 31. That means, and another thing, all points around a circle or around a point must add up to 360. So to work at a big angle from here, which is what they want, you all you're going to do now is 360 minus 31. And if you do that, you should get an answer of 329. And that is what they want. The bearing is 329 degrees. So this E thing says that's the set of everything, like the whole space. That's all letters of the alphabet, meaning basically A, B, C, all the way up to Z, yeah? X, Y, Z. So all the alphabets, all 26 letters. Now B is for Brazil, I is for Ireland. List the members of this set B uniting of I. And this one means intersecting. So uniting means everything in the, the set B and I. So list all the letters that I have. So in the B we have, well, we're going to list everything B, R, A, Z, I. And then try not to repeat letters here. Yeah? So I can see that I is being repeated. A is being repeated. And R is being repeated. E, nope. Oh no, L is repeated, obviously, you see. And then N, and then D. Okay? It just helps to just double check. Next one. B intersecting with not I. So what that means, so what is not I? Not I means, if this is if this is the, all the letters of island, not I means every other letter. So for example, every other letters of the alphabet not mentioned. So you, they got these seven letters, it's going to be the other 19 letters. Well, what's the comment right now is they both have an I, they both have an A, they both have an R, and they both have an L. So the answer should be B and Z. Next one, K, you've got Kenya. K-E-N-Y-A. Cody writes down a statement that B and K have, n this means nothing in common. So this means when they intersect, they have nothing in common. So just a reminder, B, if it helps to just see letters side by side, you've got B, R, A, Z, I, L. So they're telling us there's not, no letters in common. Well, that's false. They both have the letter A. So why is he wrong? They both have a, a well they both have a, they both have a in common or they both have the the element a that's a nice way to say it, the element a in common so false okay so number 19 okay now we're dealing with some triangles so a b c d and f g h are parallel straight lines okay Angle for BEC is 44. The length BE is equal to length CE. Work out the size of angle JGH. JGH. So luck or oh, nice, they marked it for us. Let's call that angle X here. Yeah? So we know what we're talking about. Give a reason for each stage you're working. Okay, cool. What we're going to do here, guys, we're going to try and, and complete this as we go along because that's the best way to do it. Now, a couple tricks here. We have an isosceles triangle which tells us this is the same, meaning these two angles are equal. So we could say, Angle E B. So this one to, to understand what angle is what? This angle here is basically E B C. And this angle here is basically E C B. We can say that angle E B C is equal to angle. You can write words if you prefer. E C B. Because triangle E B C is an isosceles Silly's triangle, yep. Yeah. Okay, let's call B and C Y, give them names, yeah. So we can say, therefore, 44 plus both the Y's must equal 180. And then to work out the Y's, you can do 180, take away the 44, and then half your angle, yeah. So therefore, Y is going to equal, so in your calculator, just do 180 minus 44, that'll give us 136. And half 136, you get 68. Now, another trick is if these two angles are 68, these two are also 68 because it follows another rule, you know. We say that these two angles are corresponding because they, they take the same identical shape. Because you've got parallel lines, these are straight up the same, and they look the same. 
So we can also say angle, well, EBC equals angle BGH. That's a lot of names. We can say angle EBC must equal angle, we just said BGH, yeah? We can say since these are corresponding angles. In that case, they both equal 68 degrees. If that's 68, now this is the last, this is the easy part. Then you can say angles on, this is a straight line, yeah? So that means 68 plus X must equal 180 degrees. So you can say, therefore, X equals 180 minus 68, which is 112 degrees. And we can say, since angle BGH plus angle JGH, equals 180 degrees as they are on a straight line as they are part of a straight line okay which adds up to 180 degrees that's it that should be it and our final answer what we said was 112 degrees right 112 nice and you get five marks for all of that that's good news now mariana sells bags of bird food the bags that Mariana sold last week each contain 12 kg of seeds. Okay, let's check that out. The bags that she is going to sell next week will each contain a mixture of nuts and seeds. All right. Well, for each bag, the weight of nuts to the ratio of weight of seeds is 4 to 5. Okay, so what that, that means, if you add them up, you get a total of 9 parts. We know 4 parts are nuts and 5 parts are seeds. Okay. The total weight of the nuts and the seeds in each bag will be 19.35 kg. Okay, got it. Now, the weight of seeds in each bag that Mariana sells next week will be less than the weight of seeds in each bag that Mariana sold last week. Okay, well, that's a lot of info. Work out the decrease as a percentage of the weight of seeds in each bag that Mariana sold last week. Well, I can see why anyone gets tired of reading this. That is a lot of reading. Let's do a step by step here. Now, Let's talk about last week here. Yeah? So she sold 12 kg of seeds. There's no mention about nuts. How about we link these ratios together here? Yeah? So good way to check this out. We have a total. We know 19.35 equals 9 parts, right? So 19.35 kg equals 9 parts. Let's go find one part. So to find one part, you want to divide 19.35 by 9 parts. And you should get... 2.15 kg for one part. Now, we know that the number of seeds represents five parts. So that means you need to find five parts now. So five parts. So times 2.15 by five, and you should get 10.75. So that means the weight is 10.57 kg for next week. Whereas in their case, it was 12 kg. So we're going to write them both down. So it's going to basically be, so it went from 12 kg and it went down to 10.75 kg. So there's a very easy way to find um, the percentage decrease here. Yeah? So they want to find, right, work out the decrease as a percentage. Okay, so it's always, the formula is like this. It's always known as the change over the original. That's how you work out percentage decrease. And then, of course, because it's a percentage, you've got times it by 100. So what is the change? Well, it went from 12 to 10.75. So let's subtract the numbers. 1.25 on the top line. And the original was 12 kg, right? So 12 goes here. And then you're going to times that by 100. So put that in your calculator, guys. And when you do that, you should get a percentage decrease of... How many decimal places they want? One decimal place. So I'll write a full answer. So you get percentage decrease of... 10.4%. Nice. Here is a right angle triangle. You've got 6.5 on that side, x on this side, and 42 there. Work out the value of x. Now, every time you want to work out something related to right angle triangles, you're either going to use Pythagoras or trigonometry. Trigonometry is that Sokotoa thing. Sokotoa is like this So, ka, toa. I recommend you guys uh, memorize this, yeah? This is very important Sokotoa. S is for sine, C is for cos, and T is for tan. And the letters, this is opposite hypotenuse, adjacent hypotenuse, and opposite adjacent. We're going to explain how it goes, yeah? Now, 
because you've got an angle involved and lengths, you got to use Sokatoa. If there was no angles and they only want you to find lengths, you're going to use Pythagoras. So let's use Sokatoa. So we're going to have to label what we know, yeah? Anything opposite the angle is called the op. The opposite is so 6.5 is opposite the angle, so it's called the O. And X, anything on the long diagonal length, is always the hypotenuse. And that's it. If you know these two, you're sorted. So which one has O and H, basically? That's the easy question. Well, so has O and H, meaning we don't need these two guys. We're just working with so. This means S, sine of the angle. So the formula is sine of the angle. So sine 42 is going to equal O over H. So that's how it is. Sine equals O over H. Well, O is 6.5 and H is X. Now, all you've got to do is literally rearrange this and make X a subject. Well, you've got 6.5 divided by X. To get to the other side, you multiply X. So I just swap these two around you. It's just going to be X equals 6.5 over sine 42 in the calculator. So just make sure you enter that in the calculator, guys. Yeah? Your answer should be... Oh yeah, when you put sign, you notice a bracket. Make sure you put 42 within the bracket here. Yeah? And to one decimal place, x would be 9.7 centimeters. Okay, that's what you should get. Let me know if you guys got that. If you got it, then you've basically smashed this question. It's quite easy. Once you practice it a few times, you realize Sokotoa and Pythagoras is easy. And they give you a lot of space for that. Now, solve the simultaneous equations. Show clear algebraic working. All you have to do is just, when you want to solve a pair's equation like A's and C's or X and Y's, look at the first two. You have to make sure that the values in front of the left, the first layer like A, has to be the same as the bottom. This is 5A and that's 2A. So to make them the same, you just times about what they don't have. So what I mean by that, you times the top row by 2, because the bottom one is 2A, the bottom one by 5, because the top row has 5. And that's it, you just times the whole equation by 2 and the whole by 5. When you do that, you can get the following. You can get 5a times 2, which is 10a. Next one to give us 2c becomes, times about you get 4c. 10 times 2 is 20. And then for the second equation, 2a times 5 is 10a, minus 4c times 5 is 20c, and then 7 times 5 is 35. And now all you do is literally put a big line like this and then subtract the equations. Yeah, that's the trick. The trick is you want to eliminate the 10a. Yeah? That's, how, that's the elimination method. Now, let's do this here. Yeah? 10a take away 10a is nothing. 4c minus minus 20c, so the double minus makes a plus. 4c plus 20c is 24c. And then 20 take away 35 in the calculator is minus 15. And then to find c, it's just minus 15 divided by 24. If you put this in calculator, you should get minus 0 0.625 for c. Now, all you want to do to find a, Pick any equation from here that looks easy to you. I'm going to pick, I don't know, this maybe um, the first row here yeah, because they got plus and I like plus, even though it's going to become minus. So copy the first equation, 5a plus 2c equals 10. So you can say using, 10. you're going to substitute this back in. Therefore, sub, let's call this, let's just call this 1, yeah? Sub 1 and call this equation 2. Sub 1 into 2. It tells you like what equations, yeah? You're going to replace this C value of minus 0 0.65. You're going to have 5A plus 2C. So 2 times minus, so it will be 2 bracket minus 0 0.625 has to equal 10. Then just tidy this up, yeah? So therefore, you've got 5A, 2 times that number in the calculator. If you put it in the calculator, exactly 2 bracket, all of that. It should give us minus 1.25 equals 10. And now moving minus 1.25 across, remember, if you move across equal, you have to plus 1.25. So it'd be 5a equals 10 plus 1.25 is 11.25. And then your calculator, you do a is going to be 11.25 divided by 5. So basically, just do that. 11.25 divided by 5. And if you do it carefully, you should get 2.25 for a. So a equals 2.25. And c, we, we said earlier, was minus 0.625 nice hope this helped guys yeah i hope you guys got these values okay 23 
Now, factorize x squared plus 2x minus 24. Ooh, so it's a double bracket problem. So all you gotta do, when you've got a quadratic, quadratic means you've got an x squared, an x, and a number. You just put two brackets like that, and you put x's here because x times x gives us x squared. Now we need to ask ourselves, what two numbers multiply to make 24? Well, to get 24, you can, you can do 6 times 4, or you could do 12 times 2. Now we've got to pick a pair which has a difference of 2, yeah? I think that's quite easy. 6 and 4 has a difference of 2. So we're going to put 6 and 4 in. Now they want us to get a positive 2x. So that means you have to do positive 6 minus 4 gives us positive 2. So plus 6 and minus 4. That should give us an answer of plus 2. And, our, this, and this is fully factorized. Now it says hence, using the same equation, x squared plus 2x minus 24 equal to 0. We've got to solve it. So all we do now is just copy it out. x plus 6 x minus 4 and put it equals 0 and the cool thing about quadratics guys you just literally underli underline both of them and write and flip the signs for the answer so if it's x plus 6 in the bracket out of the bracket it will be x equals minus 6 if it's x minus 4 in the bracket because you've got a negative sign it will be a positive x equals positive 4 so that's our two answers cool and this one obviously goes there nice that was quite easy here is a triangular prism Okay, work out the volume of the prism. Give your answer correct to freeze in figures. Now, when it comes to any prism, guys, yeah, prism, all prism means that you look at the first shape, which is triangular. So they look at this face here, which is a triangle, and you multiply, and then they just extend it across by 15 centimeters to make it 3D. So in reality, all you gotta do is find the area of this face and times it against 15. And that'll give you the volume. So volume equals area times the, the length of it, in this case 15. Now how do you work at the area of this triangular face? So let's just redraw the, the triangle here, the right angle triangle here. Yeah? We know it's got a length of 7.4, but for some reason it's got a diagonal length of 11.2. So we need the height, right? And guess what, guys? We need this height. And guess what? This shape is actually a right angle triangle, so you can use Pythagoras' theorem. And remember, Pythagoras' theorem is easy. It's just literally a squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is called c squared. Is right, A and B could be any of these two, but C would always be the diagonal 11.2. So this is our C. That means we can say, using the formula, H squared plus 7.4 squared must equal 11.2 squared. And now to get H or H squared, we need to, we need to basically move 7.4 squared across the equal sign. So we say set H squared equals 11.2. We move it by subtracting, because you've got positive, so it'd be minus 7.4 squared. Now just put all of this in your calculator. Like don't even like work it out. Write in your calculator 11.2 squared minus 7.4 squared. And if you do that, 70.68. Now they want us to find just h here. Yeah? Well, we need to find h to solve our problem. So to get rid of the square, you need to square root 70.68. So square root your answer, guys, and you should get a h value of, of 8.4. That works perfectly. Now, actually, let's copy a few numbers, 8.47, just to be safe. So that gives us our height. Now we can work out the area of the triangle here, and then, we, then we're done. So the area of the triangle now, so just redraw that triangle here. Always good to redraw your steps. You've got 8.407 for the height, and the base is 7.4. The area of a triangle is always base times height over 2. So base times your height over 2. Well, it's just basically 7.4 times your height, we just found it out, all of that over 2. So let's put that in the calculator. Let's do, just keep one decimal place here, yeah? 31.1, yeah? And then all you got to do now is just times your answer in your calculator by 15. They want, remember, they wanted the volume, right? So going back to the volume, so here's the area. If you want to copy more digits, it should be something like this, roughly. The volume is just area, which we just found, times 15. So that's just basically... 31.106 dot 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 times 15. I'll say just use your answer in your calculator. Yeah? Times against 15. And voila, you have your answer. And then give it the three similar figures. So we might get slightly similar values, but if you round up the three similar figures, it, you should get something like either 467, roughly, yeah? Centimeters cubed. If you get 466, should be okay, I think. Or 468. 
but roughly that should be your answer. Your calculator could pro probably read this 466.593 or 593, sorry, 59 something something. Freezing figures means you underline the first three numbers and look at the fourth number. If it's five or more, this has to go up to 467. But yeah, all of that for five marks, guys. That should be this one done. Okay, 25. Cheng Bu sold a house for 180,000 yuan. Now, the amount for which he sold the house is 24% more than the amount he paid for the house. Nice, he made a profit. Work out how much Chen Bu paid for the house. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. Now, I like to use a beautiful formula, guys, yeah? It's called the OVNV formula. You've got the original value, one plus or minus a rate gives us the new value. That's literally it. So, he sold the house for 184000 so that was probably his new value. The amount for which he sold the house is 24% more than the money paid for, so that's our rate, 24% more. They want the original value. So all you do is keep the OV, that's what we want to find. It goes up by 24, so 1 plus, if you put your cut, 24% remember, is 24 over 100. And the new value was 180k. All you got to do in your calculator, guys, just throw this bubble bracket underneath there, you're dividing it across, because remember it's multiplied to OV. The original value is 180k over all of that bracket. That's just a nice way to get to get it right. Okay, try and copy this exactly as it is. If you guys can do that, literally you've smashed it, honestly. And then you'll realize that the original he paid for the house was, according to the calculator, all this in the calculator would give us, uh, I'm going to put the, 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 the calculator value, 145. 161.2903 you want he wants three in figures so we're going to basically take the first three numbers and look at that one it's less than, because one is less than five it stays at 145k okay so it'd be 145,000 you want okay roughly now z if i pronounce it or v or d i'm not sure how you pronounce his name bought a house on 1st of january 2017 when she bought the house, its value was 120,000 yuan. Now it's telling us that the value of the house increased by 1.8% per year, so it's compounding. Now work out the value of the house on 1st of January. So basically, it's from 2017 to 2020, so that's three years later. Now we're going to use the same formula, guys. We know it's going up here because it's increased. So it'll be OV, 1 plus the rate, equals new value. Now there's one more thing to add. Because it's going up by per year, you can put like a little y value means how many years has it been. So let's let's put everything down. We know that the original value was 120k. We know the rate r is 1.8%. And we know it's lasted three years. So they want to find a new value. So therefore it's going to be replacing everything. OV is 120,000. Bracket 1 plus the rate 1.8%. So that's 1.8 over 100. Yeah. The year is a power. Power 3. And that should give us the answer, which is a new value. So put all of this in the calculator, guys, and that'll give us the new value. And you're literally done. So 120,000 times, and just take your time, because this kind of question takes time to write as well. When I did it anyway, I got this value. Power, oops, power three, not nine. I got a new value of 126, comma, 597.8. Three three nine eight. Now they want again three same figures, yeah. So underline the first three numbers. Look at the fourth. This is basically five or more. So that hundred twenty six k rounds up to hundred twenty seven k. And I think that's it, guys. I think we have completed the question. Yeah. Nice. Well, if you guys enjoyed the walkthrough, you know, please give me a like here, share, and subscribe your friends, and um. Also, remember, like I said earlier, check out the Amazon books. You know, this is helpful for revision. I have, like, collections for you guys. Make sure you look at your one, your IGC Foundation collection, and get the ones that relate to you. Most of you guys will be doing at Excel, so that should be good for you guys to practice. But, yeah, of that, guys, you know, I will see you a lot next time, and let me know for any other papers you want me to work on. I'm trying to complete all the recent papers, as always, and try and keep up to date with stuff. So keep me posted, guys, and we will chat more. So I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.